So I'm delighted to have joining me this week on our Outside the Pegs interview on the Grass Strap Banter podcast. Well, it's another legend of the Grass Strap racing. I can't really, I keep throwing that term around legend, but this man really is a legend. Uh, he's a former British Grass Strap champion. He's a European finalist and really superstar of the sport throughout the 70s and 80s and 90s. Welcome to the podcast, Trevor Banks. Hi, nice to speak to you again. A long 36 years of um, of racing. Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of things that um, to talk about and different things that have gone on. Yeah, we'll yeah. sort of we we'll sort of start with your uh, how you how you sort of started racing. Obviously, lots of people know that your dad uh, has all, has been involved with racing, so it's been a, a, a lifelong thing for you. Yeah, it's been um, yeah, but basically, I mean, um, my brother was dad had packed up racing when when my brother was racing Graham, and he was he was doing the Canterbury Speedway and. Uh, he was, he was well known on the grass tracks abroad and uh, so I mean I was into football and I wanted to uh, I wanted to be a footballer and it was, was I was about four, four, when I was about 14 in 1917 that um, we had my brother's um, Triumph Tiger Cup that he used and became um, um, a road to menace. he won the Rabbit Cup which it was the, the riders used to take part in that when they were 16 years old yeah. and um uh, People like Graham Murray, um, the Rolf boys, and everything. Because you know, I, I I saw all of this going on as a child. You know, um, from six, seven, we used to go to the meetings, watch Dad race, and he was at Barham, and then you know, and then Graham came along, and he was riding as well. So um, I started off in the juniors in 1970, and um, yeah, it all it all started then. And uh, I did a couple of years in the juniors. Um, with with different riders, Rocky Coots and um, you know I have a job remembering some of the riders. I think Chrissy Mackett was in there. Yeah. I remember Mar- Martin Hagen was was younger than me, so he was on I don't know maybe the one two fives or the um, or the hundred cc's. There was I think Steve Weverly, Weverly which um, he ended up having an accident in Speedway, didn't he? He he was um, he was in the um, the juniors at the same time. Yeah, and I, I just yeah. So basically, we started off, we started off in the juniors, and uh, and then when I became sixteen, where I um, had my first meeting at uh, Smarden, Smarden, which was um, that was run by the Sarah, the Sarah Club, and uh, I raced my two my two hundred Cub with the two fifties. Yeah, enjoyed the day, and uh, then we had the handicap race, and obviously I got put on the front line, and I just um, I knew Graham Hurry was at the back, and Graham Hurry was riding good on a five hundred in them days, and uh, he just couldn't manage. He was he was just on me, and I managed to get across the start <laughs> start line, and uh, that was my first win on the on the seniors, and uh, I think I got three pound three pound fifty for winning that. Uh, wow. That, um, r- so uh, yeah, I, I'd seen I'd seen lots of things going on with engines and and preparing bikes because I spent time in the garage with my dad. Um, dad was quite a good, a very well, very good engine tuner. He used to do all all our engines, and uh, my brother was quite an engineer. So you know, I had a, a lot of backing and a, a, a lot of experience in the workshop, which which is it came quite useful for for preparing my bikes and uh, knowing what's going on which it was quite important if you know when you started um, you know my first abroad meeting was in Swybrooken yeah um, and I was only 18 years old and uh, I didn't have a good meeting it was um, Swybrooken is a large track and uh, I don't I didn't I didn't make the final didn't make, even make the semi-finals but um, there was blokes like Bruce Cribb were there and, and Steve Hartley he um Steve Hartley actually won it. My brother was in the final, but I can't remember where he actually finished. But I do remember Bruce Cribb I mean, in the final his twist grip was coming off and uh, instead of um stopping or just stopping he actually pushed his hand into the handlebars the end of the handlebars to stop it slipping off and um he he, he came in and he had a hole in his hand oh. where he but Bruce Cribb was was a hard old boy. Yeah. But, so yeah, and then it then it went on from there. Really, um, Gareth just different meetings. Romney Marsh and um, riding in <coughs> in Le Bourne in um, 
France for the first time in, in uh, and Miramont in '75, and yeah, you know, I was get I was getting res- results. Um, I preferred to ride in France because um, I enjoyed the atmosphere of the French um, French people and everything. We just carried on, and then it just yeah it went from there. Really. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you were we were saying before just now the the seventy so not long after the seventy seven Lydon International, you nearly won it. Yeah. Um, yeah, nineteen seventy-seven in Lydon International was um, that is well. I think it's one of my favourite tracks, Lydon, on the, on the chalk in the international chalk track, and uh, had a very tight first turn. Yeah, I mean, um, and they they used to have some very good riders that used to turn up there, and uh, I was I was riding well, I made the final, and uh, uh, the major was there, and all the international people like Stuart Limblum, uh, Abdi Groot. Um, you name it, Don Godden, um, Joe Hughes, all all the all the people that you could you know you could think that were, was good at grass track were normally the the Lydon International, and uh, I followed Ivan Major and I thought, oh, I'm second, it's all right, it's great, it's really, you know, I'm doing all right, I'm second, and I didn't realise at the time it wasn't until the last lap I thought, but I can I can actually pass Ivan Major, and I I um. <laughs> I made the last turn and I was just on it, just on him going over the line. But the reason with that, the, for that was because he, he was Ivan Major, and Ivan Major was in front of me, and I was, I was thinking, well, no, no, you know, he's he's a fantastic rider and, and he can, you know, um, but that that was a meeting that that uh, was another learning curve for me. Yeah, but um, it was you'd obviously. You obviously were at a level by then where you were able to race against the best in the world, effectively, and you know things started to happen from there, really. Yeah, yeah. It. Um, I wouldn't say that I. Um, um, I wasn't a natural rider. I um, in the juniors, I I wasn't. I was okay. I was fair, but I was. Um, I, my brother Graham, he had a he had a, a nice style. I I was a little bit aggressive. And uh, I, I, I didn't have a good style at first, and uh, but I learned by my mistakes, by crashing and having accidents. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I did. Um, yeah, that no, um, two or three times I've come back from Germany with with wrists broken and ankles, and we've we just travelled back um, when I've at a place at Bad Swish in Bad Swish in Am. Mm. I cra- I, uh, and yeah, so I, I learned the hard way, but it it. Um, to be honest with you, it all came together after them in 1978. It was um, we had a bit of a in in the family. We, my brother had an accident at um, <coughs> New Romney. I was um, <coughs> excuse me. I was I was um, in the same final. It was in, it was the final race of the day, and um, Graham was in that race as well. And uh, I remember making a good start. I was gone. I was I was. It was it was a time when. It, things were, were were beginning to happen, and I, I had the ability to to do it. Yeah. And um, and then yeah, obviously I'd I'd come round after the first lap and saw that Graham had had the accident. So there, yeah, that was that was a, a, a that was a big shock. That yeah. was a very big shock. And um, Graham Graham had been um, he'd been a good speedway rider, a good grass track rider, and um, you know afterwards. You know, everyone's saying, "Are oh, you going to carry on? Are you going to stop?" And I'm thinking, "Do I stop? You know, do do I carry the name on, or what do I do?" You know, so mm. well, I I did decide that I wanted to ride, and that's when I, I actually you know carried on, and, and we st- we started, and we went start going abroad again. And uh, my brother was dev- developing the four valve jack that we'd um, been helping him do, and he he. Um, He'd had teething problems with it, so Dad and myself took it on to to get it, you know, to to do the problems that we had. And uh, uh, in 1979, I went out and became British champion. So, yeah. On the Jap, so we um, and then then you know it did start to um, start winning meetings and going to France nearly every weekend France and then Germany and uh, yeah brilliant, a brilliant time really I mean that British Championship there the, the 1979 British Championship that you won from then on really for the next sort of I don't know 10, 10 years really you were at the top I mean you had the 
the British Championship, you then defended the title the second year. This was pre-Masters, of course. Yeah, that's right. And then, uh, and then in '81, you just missed out, but you know, yeah. well, def- you started the meeting as the favourite. Um, yeah. But just, just missed out, and then the yeah, Masters yeah. came about. Well, in the on '79 in Braintree, we'd um, made our own frame for a centre carb, and we made the, the four valve jack uh, centre carb and. In in the winter we made the frame and uh, you know we we did run on a shoestring. Um, Dad Dad went to uh, a ladder company that used to make ladders and they had the right size. I think it was a uh, it was a half inch tubing. Might have been inch tubing, half inch. It was half inch tubing, hmm. and it was very thin. But they had a tubing that went inside. So we we he brought that tube back and we bent the rear subframe, the tube inside the other one on the back end and that frame that we actually made it really it worked well and that's what we won the British Championship against Wiggy and Wiggy was on Lantern Hammer stuff and everything and I think he was running the jewellers then I'm not sure the jeweller frames but that that's when me and Wiggy became friends really he came up to me after the meet and he said can I sit on your bike and I can always remember Wiggy he said he sat sat on it and I had these funny handlebars which I wouldn't use nowadays. <laughs> and he sat on it, and he's he's thinking, and he's you know, and he's and he he got off the bike, gave it back to me. He said, "How did you win on a heap of crap like that?" I walked away. <laughs> I thought well, that's not, you know, but, but but then you know the, you know it it was it was it was it worked all right, but it wasn't it wasn't pretty, but it worked all right for me. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go, but that's what Wiggy said. And uh, yeah. uh, since that day that I spoke to him, we've we, we've been friends. We went to Australia together. We've you know we've travelled together doing different bits and pieces. And uh, um, he, he was a good good friend and a, and a good ambassador for the sport. He was just he was he was brilliant. Yeah, I mean you you spend yeah you went spending time with him. I won't go into it too much. But we spent time with him in Australia, and he. He'd be up in the morning. He would plan his leathers that he wants for the season. This was in the winter time in Australia, and he used to sound draw his leathers up. And you'd get up in the morning, and he'd, he'd drawn two or three sets of leathers that he wanted to go off to to BJM huh. Barbara Miles leathers. And yeah, no, he was very he was so professional. Yeah. And uh, but uh, you know, and then we we just gone on from there, just um, doing different meetings and and um, good results. Well, the Masters uh, came about in '82, and it was a sort of the two round system as opposed to the British Championship that you'd been sort of winning, and then you had your second. The first year in the Masters, I think you were quite a way down the order, but after that, you had a string of being the runner up, uh, which must have been quite painful having to keep coming second all the time. Yeah. I mean, there, there was times. I'm trying to think. There was, I think, Tatum was in front of you once. Scoey, I think there was a, a Scoey. I think uh, we had a tremendous race. Scoey, he was. Um, it was between me and Scoey in the final, and I, I was trying so hard, but I just couldn't pick up the drive to, to pass him. And uh, that was one year when I finished second. Yeah, um, that was '88, I think that one at um, Abingdon or Eton, yeah, I think possibly. Abingdon, yeah, and. Uh, but there, there again, knowledge. If I'd have known, if I'd have known what I know now, for that day, we were, you know, because we, you know, we, we couldn't get it to drive at the time because we had, we, it was just, it was too much compression or whatever. But if we'd have, if we'd have known what we we know today, um, we could have altered the valve timing, and we could have got it to drive a bit more. Maybe not. Maybe Sco Sco was riding brilliant on that day. I mean, he was really, really going. Yeah. Um, but I just needed that little edge, and uh, I think there is a there is a there is a, a video on YouTube. He was a good um, rival of yours as well, because you you know you had a lot of good races with Steve, and there was that one there, and the aces. You won the aces of course, ace of aces in eighty six, and then you yeah. nearly won it in eighty seven. But I think a back wheel puncture, whilst yeah. you were involved in a ride with Steve again, he was a great yeah. rival. Yeah, that that was. A- the one with Steve, that was quite a, a tremendous um, entry. I yeah. think there was there was Hans Nielsen, there was Wiggy, there was Chris Morton, and, I, and uh, I knew the Godden the Godden that we was using would would pull, and they normally used to to um, roll the track 
Um, and must say this, and you must give it to um, Ian Barley and uh, Grubby and Dickie Staff and um, Christine, the wife of Ian Barley. Yeah. Because those meetings that they put on, they were just tremendous, weren't they? That that was they were one of the best meetings in, in the world, really. That 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 Ace of Aces meeting at the end of the year. Uh, they, they, I mean, to I know it was stony, and it and but the atmosphere of that meeting, the Ace of Aces, was brilliant. Yeah, I mean the last one was '97, and we're still 20 years, you know, still trying yeah. to. You know, we're still looking back at it as the best thing ever. I mean, my man, some people say it gets close, but I don't know. It was something about the Aces that was just, just magical. Yeah, there, there was. I don't know what it was. I mm. mean, it, the bonfire burn up that was brilliant. Yeah, that was that was that was that was a brilliant, you know, end of season thing. Um, we used to do it and it was cold and you had the bonfire the fireworks afterwards and uh, that was all down to the Penfolds and the, um, the, the the run all that which was another brilliant meeting really yeah and uh, but um, yeah on that on that day we just I managed to um, I didn't make a good start I know that I went into the, the first bend in sixth place and I just kept hooking up on the dirt on the outside and uh, I was well padded up for the stones and just kept going and going and I managed to pick up the speed, yeah, and they just picked up a punch. I'd got past Steve, and I'd just come out on the on the third, third second turn. I come out and I had a little bit, um, three quarters of a lap to do, and, and the punch. I had a punch, and Steve come back past me. Yeah, still finished second, but disappointed. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, one it's of racing. those. That's racing. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, um, good. You had a real good record at the Masters, um, you know, as as far as Rostrums go, uh, but never managed to win the title, which is it seems remarkable, really. I mean, Steve Schofield only won it once, and that was in the eighty eight race with you. Yeah. Um, but you yeah. never managed to win it. But I can tell you that of all of the people that have competed, um, you're the you've won the most races in the competition without actually winning the title. <laughs> I don't know if that's a title you want or not, really. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I've done that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, we're always up there. I did. I, I think there was two or three years where I didn't really do that well. I had teething problems, or you know, there was a there was a time when Mark Lauren won it. That was at um, Collier Street. Um, I don't know what year that would have been. Uh, ninety one, I think. Mark Lauren, Lauren won, won it. it. Yeah, ninety one. Yeah, well, yeah, well, 90, 91, because it was all done on the fi- on the finals, and I was leading the final. Yeah. And uh, I was away, it was good, and then um, I ended up with a terrific vibration on the bike, and um, and, and it was it was a hell of a job to control, and I thought the, either the swinging arm had come loose or the back wheel would come loose and everything, so I did pull out, because it was just like... And the, the tread of the tyre had... Um, it had come off like a remold tire and the tread was completely gone on one side of the of the tire so it was just when it was spinning it was just it was just vibrating oh. so so if i'd have um if i'd have managed to have um held on to that race um because the next round was cancelled at um i don't know where it was but it oh, was cancelled yeah so um, yeah 93 that was so that was Wimborne. The, the meeting was supposed was to be at Wimbledon, but it was rained off. Yeah, so rained that's... Off, so, that's, so it was warded to um, Mark Lorem because yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we've we've had a good run. We've had some good fun, and um, and, and, and my dad did most of the <clears throat> most of the engines. He's, he's, we never dad used to spend a lot of time down at West Lakes. We, we used uh, when I beat um, George Hack. That was another fantastic race round there. Scoey and Hack, Hack and myself. Um, yeah. That was on a that was on a flat top Westlake. They used to call it the manhole, the manhole cover, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I've still got that engine, and and that was all worked on by Dad, and we we modified different things, and and uh, that worked good. Yeah. And then and then we went over to the Godden engines, which um, Don and uh, Gary at Godden's, uh, Gary Drake, and uh, they helped out Dad, and they did different things, and uh, yeah, so we. we you know, I've got a lot to say, a lot to say to my, you know, to my dad. Really, he, you know, he really did. Um, he was there. He was there doing the engines uh, when I was doing speedway. He'd be preparing the engines for the weekend. And uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think I'd have achieved as much as I have, have achieved if it hadn't been for my dad 
and, and and my mum. I mean, mum. You know, when when Graham died, she, she you know that must have been a a, a tremendous thing for my mum. Yeah. But, um, she's she always stuck by me to to carry on. I got two sisters, uh, Christine and Denise. They've always they've always supported me. You know, I, I yeah we had we had a good. I've got I've got a good family. Everybody's um, yeah. They've always they've always backed me. You know, and uh, mm. yeah, that, that, those sorts of things have all happened. And um, yeah, it's so important with your family. And obviously, uh, last last time we spoke, we were talking about your dad traveling a lot over Europe and things. But um, yeah. of course, your performances in the Masters were meaning that you were getting lots of opportunities in the 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 FI the well the World Long Track meetings and the European meetings. And you had a couple of outings at the World Long Track final. You had a, the Far Kirk and one, and then. Uh, yeah. I think Moldorf was the second, the second yeah. in '87. Yeah. Was how did yeah. you get on with the long track? Yeah, I did enjoy it. I was doing speedway then, and I think the speedway didn't really help the long track. Sort of, you know, I I did tend to lock up a bit, but I I had some good meetings. But I always found, even like the European Championship and the long track, I always, I don't know, either I I was very nervous or. Um, I don't know, I always seemed to psych myself out a little bit, Gareth, and yeah. uh, there was one time, I don't even know what meeting it was, but there was one meeting, it was the final, and we'd hired a hand engine, Godden, yeah. and I used it in the, uh, I think it was three legs or four legs for the, the qualifying to get in the semi-final, and Dad said, well, you, you've you've done nothing in the last three races on, on, on the hand engine, take my engine out. And uh, to be honest with you, Dad's engine that he prepared for me was better, better than the... I mean, it just, it came out the start. I led the race for a lap and a half. But because I'd had such bad races that I was I was keeping on the inside of the track because of the... There was no dirt deflectors then. You didn't have dirt deflectors. So you, if you went on the outside of somebody, you ended up just getting filled in. Yeah. So I... Um, and I, I didn't move out to the dirt. So uh, there again, I got moved back to third place, I think, in that race. Cause it, it, uh, so we, yeah, it was hard. There was, it was blooming hard. You had lots of lots of good riders. Egan Muller, PC, used to be in the meetings. You had Phil, Phil Collins, and I think uh, Les Collins did a few of the, the long track meetings. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there was lots of good good riders. John Gert Rist, um Trying to think of the other brilliant riders. There were George Hack was in there, yeah, and Carly Carly Meyer. Yeah, it wasn't the long track wasn't easy, and and the the expense it cost you for tyres and everything like that. It was it was um, you really had to have a good sponsor and to really to do it professionally. Really, you needed the best the best motors and the best of everything. Yeah, I mean it. It the mind boggles, really. I mean nowadays they seem to have sort of some of them have got sort of five bikes that they take to the yeah, the long right. track. <laughs> Just unbelievable yeah. the amount of money involved. It's uh, yeah. yeah spiraled out of control a little bit, I think. Yeah, the expense of it all. But yeah, talking about the long track now, we we um, we borrowed it um, off of Don. We borrowed an old one of the early Godden engines, and and Dad worked on it. And we we used it for a, a, a bit, and then we gave it back to Don. And then um, I can't think of the bloke's name now, but he used it in the World Long Track and won won the final. It was um, it'll come to me in a minute. Mm. <laughs> <I can't, laughs> he, he, he actually won on that engine. Right, Godden a Godden engine. Um, yeah, Godden. He, he not won Marcel that. Gerhard. No, no. It was, um, oh, I mean, our two brothers. There you go. See, I can't remember half the people's names now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Gary Godden would know who won it. Who, who won it. it was um, two the American boys, twin the twin brothers. Oh, doesn't matter. We will come back to that in a minute. All right? It'll come yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, American. Did he say? Yeah, American. Oh, who was it? Brothers. Um, Morans. Morans. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly Moran. Kelly Moran. Kelly. Right. Yeah, it was Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Graham Hurry has been on, and he's talked about how the world long track when it was a one day was i mean to be in it meant you were truly something because it was <laughs> much yeah. tougher mate well arguably much tougher than it is now i mean if you were in it now i think you'd probably disagree but yeah star studded would be the way to describe it i think and it was a better way of doing it the, you had the qualifying rounds you had the semi-finals 
and you had the final, and the final was done in one day, and the best rider on the day was the winner. Um, it seems like the, the the system now it just all it just you can't it's just it just goes on, doesn't it? You know, whole, you know, it's just all to do with the points and. I I watched um, Herxheim and there was hardly any people there this year. Yeah. Or la- last year. It was last year. It was last year when Smolensky won it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then, but I I think that's that's um, that's the same everywhere really. That the crowd have gone down at the moment. Um, this this year in France we had um, we had Mamand, we had Larry Ol, and we had Maurice Ess. We only had three meetings this year, and mm. when I was coming. I think we we would at least have ten meetings. Yeah, there were there, there were so many so many meetings on in France. Mm. So so um, yeah, it's, it's it's just all changed now. So uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully it will it will all pick up somehow or come back. Yeah, whether it will. It's concerning times. It really is. I mean, it's it's worrying. We we talk about it we, as much as we try and sort of put a positive spin on things you can't ignore it at the end of the day i suppose but um uh just going back to your uh european adventures uh tetero is always somewhere that you know you talked about it on the last podcast but tetero is somewhere that you absolutely loved riding at obviously yeah that would i would that comes in on one you know my favorite tracks really because yeah. it's it's down to ability and um it is a it's a it's a technical track really. You have to know what you're doing, and you know have to you have to you know the lines for for everything. And I I, I rode this just after the Berlin Wall came down, which was I think was eighty nine. Right. Yeah, that was the first meeting I did there. Yeah. Eighty nine. And uh, yeah, we we went there. We learned what we needed. Yeah, Wiggy was riding good then, and so was um, Thomas Deer. And you had. Hands off the pingo. You had um, no Gert Riss wasn't there, but there, there was a lot of um, Marshall Gerhardt. There, there were some, some really good riders that used to, used to be on the track. Yeah. But we went there the first time. Dad, Dad had ridden there. I went there when I was thirteen years old with my brother Graham. My dad raced there in the sixties, and uh, then they stopped all the European people coming in because um, they were trying to build up their riders and to get them good. And I think they'd had a few problems with the um, some of the riders, you know, doing different things after the meetings and, and uh, getting carried away with different things. So I think they stopped it for a while. And then when the, well, as soon as the um, <clears throat> the Berlin Wall came down, we were back there, and uh, that was one of my yeah one of it's one of my favourite places really. Yeah. I mean, uh, we went well, the first time we went there, we hadn't really we needed to have done a training, but we hadn't done the training and. Uh, I hadn't got the foot pegs right, and uh, we searched. We searched for some tubing in the in the workshop they got there to go in, up the end of the up the end of the foot rest, up the, the swinging foot rest, to make yep. another extra peg for going over the junk jumps, and uh, couldn't find any. So I walked around the pits. I thought, have a look around, see what I can find, and, and <laughs> I found I found a trailer, somebody's trailer that had the right tube in. So I took <laughs> I took. <laughs> And the funny thing, we t- I took and I cut out maybe three or four inches of this tubing out of this <laughs> bike trailer. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but <laughs> and it was um, so we we we, we did, I didn't think any more of it. And then when Harvey, my son, raced there on the motocross, he did the motocross meet in there, and um, he won the handicap on the motocross, and he won the B final on the on the on the grass track. Mm. I actually spotted the trailer. And there the trailer was sitting with that four inches of tubing missing out of thing <laughs> after all them years. <laughs> so that was, um, yeah, that was, but there, it was, it was, you know, it was those used to make and um, prepare things and, and you, you got on and you actually, you know, if you had a problem during the day, you used to try and solve it so you could ride. I mm. mean, there was one, one time when the head stopped, we'd, we'd done practice on the Saturday and on Sunday they'd looked and there was a big the, the weld on the headstock it was cracked it was gone the, the, it was gone so we split the bike out and I took the bike to the workshop and I'm I'm brazing I'm making a gusset to go to strengthen it and I brazed it all the way around I didn't we um, using sunglasses 
and um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's what you, nobody nobody would would be welding up and then <laughs> headstock up on a band. <laughs> <laughs> If so, uh, um, if we've got people that uh, might be listening who don't know what Tetro is, how how would you describe? Because it's unique, isn't it? How would you describe it? Well, let me, let me explain. As you, as you leave the start, thing, the the start is in a in a hollow, and you go up, and it's it's like a smooth motocross track. Really, it's not really not rutty. It's very smooth, and you you go up, and there's there's a, um, uh, like a chicane part that you do, and you drop down. You drop down on the chicane part, and then you come to the the, um, the north curve, and that that then drops down, and you go you come round, and uh, it's it's flat out from there right up through to the the big jump. They've got the hexprong, and that you 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 normally you I don't know what the I think Wiggy's got the distance, the longest distance, <laughs> uh, but um, you you do take off. And that, that's where you need good suspension and you do need, um, not motocross forks as such, but you need something to take the landing yeah. that you're doing. And then then you go down like a staircase. It's um, a little bit twisty. You, you land and you, you go to the right down the staircase and come back down round to the pits and there's, there's an off-camber pits turning. And, and, and it is spectacular. Yeah, it is. but it, it's, it was one of the the um, you have to give it some respect because it is a dangerous track. You can you can have some mishaps there. Yeah, I, I, my experience, I've had more accidents at Tetra than I ha- had in all my in all the the meetings that I did on the grass all those years. I broke my collarbone, broke my little finger, and sliced my arm. Yeah, and also I had a big crash with Robert Bath. And his chain came off on the north curve, mm. which um, he said that I knocked him off. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> being Robert Bath, <laughs> I, I, I hope you're listening, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. He um, his, his chain came off, and uh, we was go- going on the fastest part of the track, and I was right behind him, and he, and he, he just straightened up, and I I, I knocked him off. Uh, broke his wrist, and I came off as well. Mm. And I was I was lucky, lucky with that one. Yeah. And and um, the last crash I had there was when um, in 2006, in the handicap race, um, I was on the last line, and the one of the national guys who were on the front line turned the bike over. A lot of it was to do with me because I had my head down, and um, I didn't really see with the dust from the um, from the second line and every, I didn't see the bike on the track till the last minute and the chap was trying to pick his bike up and but I managed to miss him and hit the bike and that's what luckily I landed on my knee and uh, that, that's what that's what finished my career yeah and that's it I stopped that was that what was it. that was what caused it did you try and ride again after the injury no we didn't no because um, I bought this house in France which I was I was concentrating I, I was really I was only right I was 50 then so I was actually gonna I was calling it a day I was gonna ride it that season out and then the next season I was gonna do some farewell meetings and say goodbye yeah and that that was it so I'd virtually decided to, to pack it all in yeah yeah because um, we, we had other commitments to do and uh, you know so yeah. But no, Tetro has been my one of my favourite tracks, and it, and it, you get such a such a buzz riding it. I mean, a lot of people don't they don't like it. I mean, there is there's been people like Scoey, uh, Martin Agan rode it well. Um, I don't think Andrew Appleton liked it that much. Joe Screen didn't mind it, but um, uh, Donkey, I don't Donkey didn't like it. No, it is. It's um, one of those tracks that. Uh, you know, I, I walked around with Paul Cooper the first time he, he came there. And now he's one of the, the favourites there, Paul. Yeah. He, he, rides, he rides it really well, Paul Cooper. And, uh, you know, he, he's, um, he's le- learned the technique. They know what to do with the bike, how to set the bike up. So mm. Tefra has been a, a nice, a nice, and I've got a lot of, lot of friends there. Um, some sponsors, Hubert Borger, he, he um, sponsored me when the van blew up and we got towed to the track and he... he he sponsored me for a van, not not you know not a new van, but a second-hand van. And um, Lars Koch, he was the bloke 
the first bloke I spoke to in Tetro, we arrived there late in a restaurant mm. and we were looking for somewhere to sleep and he said, oh, you know, it's all closed and everything like that. And then he said, well, wait a minute. So he phoned his wife up and uh, and he took us to his house and we slept, slept wow. at his house. And uh, since then, since I, I, I was there in 89, we've been we've been uh, friends ever since i mean it's, that's what it's all about with racing isn't it it's all about the the sort of brotherhood and yeah everything that goes with it so you know when you when you had retired with that in mind did you find sort of retirement difficult to start with i mean you raced for an awfully long time you as you said you raced right up to 50 did you find it difficult yeah no it has it, yeah it's definitely been difficult to um yeah yeah i mean i I've had a few goes out on speedway bikes and had a mess around, but um, you know, sometimes you 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 think you can do. As my dad used to say, the the mind's willing, but the body body isn't. And yeah. it's, um, you just think that you can you you can do this and you can do that, and to be honest with you, your reactions are not that that as good as they used to be. No. And your uh, but you, your son Harvey um, had a bit of a go for a while, didn't he? He had a few goes on the grass. Yeah, he, he rode for Birmingham Speedway, and um, he had a couple of goes on um, a little couple of goes on the grass track in England. Um, he, he was he was he's, he was a ta- he was a talented lad. He could he could ride he could ride well, but um, uh, motocross was his thing. He, he was good at motocross and when the first time he went to Tetro he won the, the Tetro class there on the motocross mm-hmm. and then we got him in he was into speedway a little bit and he was in, and uh, he did the the, um, the international um, the grass track at, at Tetro and he, he finished he won the B final yeah so, so he, he wasn't bad but to be honest with you the, the, the finance sort of thing got to him really because he he was saying I'm doing speedway dad and I the bike's fine and then you get taken out you all all the bike's bent you've got to get a new front wheel and everything and uh, you know so he said no, I'm getting overdrawn on the bank account I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm spending money on the credit card and I'm not making it back yeah so and I can understand that it's a shame because I'd have lo- you know I'd have loved to have um, him to have continued the name but I don't think uh, it's not it wasn't for him really so yeah yeah well but, um, I guess uh, it's a familiar story to be honest with uh, with with the spiralling costs and all, also people going off to speedway and being a speedway rider now is uh, unless you're good you know unless you're in the top leagues it's it's very difficult yeah. I think to break into really difficult you know you need two bikes and you need decent kit and and even that that's uh, expensive enough and you're not making the money back so yeah it's a shame that uh, sort of yeah, he never got back I, yeah. into grass well yeah no I did <clears throat> I did sort of say to him about did he want to do the the last year at Tet- you know the 100th year yeah. 10 year, year at Tetro but he no no I've, you know he's, he's got a good job now so that that's that's him so, you know he, he's um, he's happy with that he does a bit of motocross training and <clears throat> and that was a bit of fun like that so yeah but um, fair enough no 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 that's, that's the way it is really and uh, it's sad really yeah but there you go throughout your career you obviously had an awful lot of and you sort of mentioned it yourself already but you had a lot of help over the years with lots of people so you know RTS we all know that you know Roger and RTS were heavily involved in your racing career yeah yeah well it all you know, it, it all it did really all start off with Westlake really, and um, Dad going down there, and, um, and they they supplied with with two engines, which was was useful. And then a jeweler, jeweler came along. His Wiggy was on jewelers, and he and he uh, introduced me to Paul Duncan that did the jeweler frame. So I started using the jewelers, which were fine, fine. And then um, in I think it was a couple of years later, or two or three years later. Or, maybe longer and after Roger spoke to me did I want to ride one of the RTS frames so I, I went and looked and tried and yeah so I went with Roger and we, we did quite a few different modifications together he, and he, he was using Clayton was with him and uh, Paul Fry was riding the RTS frames you yeah, know that, that that was you know, that, you know Roger was a decent old boy he is a decent old boy. Yeah, he's he was, still uh, still helping out a lot of young riders now. Yeah, well, James Shanes is on 
on his uh, chassis, isn't he? Yeah. I think he's still on them. But the, yeah, there, there were so many, there were so many people. There was Fal- Falcon Shocks, Robin, Inter- Interspan Magic Boxes, Pegasus. I don't actually remember Max Richards and Chris. They used to do the spares. They they used to help me out. And uh, Joe Hughes and Morgan. You mm. know, it is. Um, I've had some, a lot of people, and mechanic-wise, loads of me- different mechanics that have um, been alongside me and and given their weekends up to come with me and you know come down the garage and help me prepare the bikes late at night and uh, yeah so so really it, it is it's been a long long and tedious journey with all the travelling and and different things mm. and going on but um, and also my partner Liz. <clears throat> and I've got Ellie and Maria and Tamazin and my daughters. They still support me now. Maria doesn't remember, but um, uh, Ellie certainly remembers me going off to uh, speedway meetings and um, grass track meetings. And uh, that, that, that's the that is the thing. You've got to have someone to to be at home and to you know to send you off and, and you know and, and and give you support. And you, you find most people have got. I've got to have had that, you know. Yeah. All, all the all the good riders, you know. I mean Simon and all that. They they all had a good a background with Julian. Julian uh, Wig used to help Simon out quite a bit, and uh, Charlie's wife. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to think of different things that have really gone on. It's just all there is so many things that have that has, that's happened. Yeah, and I mean you're always welcome to come back on if there's anything anything else. I mean we've talked to sort of nearly an hour yeah. now but and, and it feels like there's so many different things still that we haven't talked about because yeah, yeah it's a long long time that uh and a lot of memories and it's really sort of i talk about it a lot but it's um you know it's a big part of your life really you know the grass track and it, it is it's a load of us turning up in a field and going around in circles but it's so much more than that and it it sort of it is so much more to people like yourself who so many people looked up to throughout your racing career um yeah but yeah, it's been really nice to. I was just thinking as well about RTS. You're obviously still highly thought of because I think that, well, you and your dad, because their family dog's called Monty. Yeah, know. that's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he even gets called Mr. Banks sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, quite, it's quite funny how things sort of come out. And uh, but I mean, I mean, there's probably people that I've not mentioned tonight that um, have really helped me out. Um, that I've known and there's been some you know the, you, you saw those things you become friends with people and, and that and one one person it's like Will James you probably remember Will James yep. and, and and he he was always a very he was, we were always good friends we always we did a few meetings in in um, Germany together and France and and I, I, I've been down the stayed down in Cornwall with him and that but now now he's in um He's Australian now. He's living in Australia. Yeah. But I mean, even godfather to his um, to his youngest son Hayden. Yeah. Um, although we don't see each other, but we we get, we get on the phone and chat. But you know, he would, uh, you know, Will and Andrea, James, they were they were they were very good friends. Yeah. And you know, there's so many people. Yeah. You, you just. But they, you know, the and also there's the speedway side of things, but you, you which you could go on to about all the people that we met on speedway tours and uh, all the friends that I made in, in um, riding for for Crayford and Hackney and Mil- Milton Keynes they all helped and um, you know they're, they're all good friends yeah all, all of them so and and to mention it, all of them it's, it's it will be here for another hour <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, uh, no, he, we we uh, uh, we talk about grass track as a family all the time on the grass yeah. track banter podcast we refer to everybody as the family and i think it's yeah. there's no truer word really for it no that's right mm. but um Gareth, how do you feel it's all gonna go this year it's just i just think that it's not gonna happen this year yeah it's there's a not. yeah nobody really knows at the moment we've got uh obviously we're not allowed to race until may at the minute um but yeah. that's gonna very quickly that's gonna... Yeah, that's going to move on. Yeah, that's going to move on. It's all. Um, just hopefully that it does. You can get some meetings in this year for for the boys and the and the and the fans. Yeah. Um, but um, 
Yeah, and we've got the um, Graham's got the British Masters, hasn't he? On in is that in August or September? That one. Yeah, that's September. So we've got an outside chance still. I mean, that's what everyone's clinging on to, really. And and the qualifier was due to be in June, but the yeah. DTSA club have got another date the week before the Masters so there's there's yeah. a possibility there as well so yeah there's all sorts of things that hopefully we can get something going and then Ledbury's got the the British Championships the week after the Masters in September so there's still a bit of hope at the moment yeah a bit of hope um, yeah, the, the thing is that a lot of the riders will be they will be a bit rusty I suppose <laughs> yeah 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 because effectively yeah. it's a, it's big meetings at a very early stage yeah. in the season it'll be anyway yeah. but yeah, and, and um, yeah, they're not getting the experience. But there is, I'll tell you, there is somebody that I've not mentioned to, tonight. Is um, Paul Hurry? He, he's still a very good rider. Yeah, and he's he's been impressive over, over the years. And with his injuries that he's actually had, it really is it's amazing what he's actually done. Because yeah. I don't think with that with with the problems he's had with his arm to come back and ride like he has been riding. Yeah, it's amazing. Nobody nobody thought that would happen, and he's. Uh you know to come second in europe last year was amazing and and he's also he's one masters away from equaling simon wiggs record and we all we'd love to see him win one more i think just for yeah that's what is possible yeah it's possible yeah he's been knocking on the door he's you know he was third last year and uh second i think the year before so he's not he's, he's still very much on the point the end paul really good so, rider so how many is wiggy won how he, many did he win? He won five. Oh, right. And then right. He, he won a British championship as well. So he won six altogether, but um, oh, right. he won the five Masters titles. Uh, James oh, Shames right. is on four as well. Yeah, Shames, Shames is a good rider. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Well, I think all, all those... They, they all have a, their good days. And, yeah. And Zach, Zach he's, he's been riding brilliant. Yeah. Um, there's not been so many... You know, since... That, um, Oh, Glenn Phillips is packed up, isn't it? I don't yeah. know if he's thinking of coming back or to or whatever, but uh, we've lost a few riders, and we've they've, they've there's not so many not so many riders as there was. No, that they've seemed to have. Um, we have got less, but we've got five or six. Well, probably three or four at the moment who are you know really sort of top european standard british but we've got yeah. at the minute uh, you know i don't know how much you get to see but some of the youth riders at the moment there's a lot of coming up. yeah if we can just keep them on grass track so they don't all go off and ride speedway and then we don't see them on the yeah. grass yeah we keep talking about it on the podcast because in about five years time the masters is going to be like a world final right that's good yeah it's going to be good that's going to that's going to pick it up a bit yeah. The thing is, Speedway is good for. I think Speedway does does help your grass track. It does, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it does give you that. You know, you're practicing starts. You know, if you do a Speedway meet and you have starts and you, you're you're keeping yourself you're keeping yourself rather than trying to ride just once a week. You're you're doing it during the week as well, which all helps yeah. keep you in in the, the motion of riding. But as you say, they do get they get. Um, led into speedway and then they can't get away for Sundays or because of the, the speedway control board won't let them ride because they've got a, a league match or something like that yeah but, and, and um, the worst the worst times are when uh, when these young riders they go to speedway and and it doesn't go so well you know it's tough it's really tough and uh, yeah. and then they just give it all up yeah they, yeah and that's that's tragic really given some of the talent that we've got but but there we go anyway well, Trevor well, um, We'll start to we'll start to wrap up now. So thanks for joining us. It's been a, a real privilege to have you yeah, on. No, it's, been, it's been nice to chat and uh, speak about a few of the things that have gone on. And uh, yeah, no, no, thanks for inviting me on. And uh, yeah, we, we will we'll speak soon. And uh, you know, thank also thanks to all the people that supported me out there and uh, fans and different people that uh, used to come and, and, and see me and yeah, it was a, it was a good career for me and I enjoyed every minute of it